Hello everybody and welcome to this video. In this video we will be covering a brand new feature in Inkscape, Mesh Gradients. Until now Inkscape has been able to handle linear and radial gradients but it has not been able to create curved gradients. With Mesh Gradients this becomes possible. As I mentioned before this is a brand new feature uh, and is not available in the older versions. So make sure that you have the latest version of Inkscape installed. Click on Help and then About Inkscape. As you can see, I am currently working with Inkscape 0.92. If you have an earlier version, then go to the Inkscape website and install it. One more caveat, since I have 0.92, this uh, feature is still beta, it's still experimental and it might be changed in the future. But I'm going to show you what it, uh, how it works as it is in version 0.92. Now, let's get started. First of all, we are going to draw a simple square. Next, we open the Fill and Stroke dialog. Clicking on the Fill tab, we see a number of fill options. One of these options is the Mesh Gradient. When we click on it, 12 nodes appear. We've got the four corner nodes in this example, these are grid points. We recognize that they are grid points because they are colored gray. In this example, each of the grid points has two direction nodes associated with it. We can recognize the direction nodes because they are white circles. So let's see what happens when we click and drag the nodes. Clicking and dragging the direction nodes changes the direction of the gradient. Clicking and dragging the uh, grid points changes the location of the grid points. Next, let's select the Create and Edit Meshes tool. First of all, when this is selected, we can click and drag a rectangle to select all the grid points beneath this rectangle. In this way, we can change the color value of multiple grid points simultaneously. We have a number of options in the upper bar when we have this tool selected. We can choose if we want a mesh gradient or a conical gradient. We can set the number of rows and columns in the mesh as well. In all honesty, <laughs> I have no idea what the next two options do. But the one after that is quite fun. You can pick the color of the grid points from the underneath the mesh. For example, like so. If the mesh is bigger or smaller than the bounding box, we can use this button to resize it. If we change the number of rows or columns, then we have to reapply the mesh before it takes effect. So let's start an example. Let's draw this uh, rainbow. First, I'm going to draw an arc. Next, I'm going to set the parameters of the mesh. I want four rows and I only want one column. I'm going to select each row one by one and give it a appropriate color. Next, I'm moving the grid points to the edges of the rainbow. And finally, I'm adjusting the directions of the gradients.
So, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, why not help a brother out and give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe here if you like. That's all for now, and see you in the next video.